Hi guys, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough, and how are you all doing today? I am um, working on my Lion Cup again. Uh, we'll bring you down closer. This is what it's looking like. Whoops. Just pick that up. Looking like so far. It is coming out gorgeous. Okay. Um, hopefully... You're not stuck down too in a in a situation where it's a bit too uncomfortable at the moment. Um, I'm going to zoom in now and just a couple of things. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going to head on and do more of my African travels and uh, share that with you and see how we go i will probably do one or two days maybe even a third i'll see how we go um but we're up to where are we up to day eight which is in luxor uh after staying you know staying in the um nile palace hang on i'm just trying to find my pictures um, I, yeah, I, it, to that day, day eight was an easy day. We had, um, I had, I just had two places I was going to uh, visit. Uh, one was, what was it? This is really good. One was Karnak Temple and the other was Luxor Temple. Um, so throw pictures in and I'll try today, today I'm going to actually try and just talk through the trip not go I'll try and relate it to pictures uh, I think I'm better off trying to get it through to the trip to talk about um, so you'll find pictures of Karnak Temple showing while I'm having a little yak here uh, but yeah the morning started very easy um, my pick up by a red one was not till uh, one thirty in the afternoon so I didn't leave the building didn't leave the hotel but I did walk around it and had a look around and walked in the shops found nothing nothing there of interest to buy um, yeah hang up I need to turn that light on one yeah nothing of interest to buy I walked around took some pictures of around the pool area and looking towards where I was, towards my room. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I had that first day, that day was, hang on, I need to turn off some uh, noises for notifications. Um, so yeah, Red One was picking me up at 1.30 now. I'm one of these people that has the paranoia of being late. Um, so I was there nice and early, expecting that I'd be sitting there waiting for him. Excuse me and my coffee. But lo and behold, he was actually sitting there waiting for me. <laughs> um, I'm generally waiting at least half an hour. I'm always ready early. My good old fear of being late. Um, so yeah, we went to Karnak Temple. Karnak Temple was what what the, the the monuments there were absolutely huge. Um, this is where I found out about one of the pharaohs. It was actually a female pharaoh, um, which you know they didn't didn't really have back then. Uh, so most of the depictions of uh, this pharaoh and I can't remember her name I don't think it was Hathor might have been Hathor no it wasn't Hathor because that's one of the gods I can't remember the name of this pharaoh um, but all of the depictions of her on all of these monuments were all showing her as a masculine form with the exception of one now there's um they call them the obelisk the the tall tall well not post but tall monuments with 
um, four sizes going up and then ending up in a point. That is the only um, monument where she is actually showing in a female form. Um, but it is only at the, the tip where people from down below can't see it. So I couldn't show you what it looked like. I can probably show you the obelisk it was on. Uh, what else was there? There was a scarab beetle, massive scarab beetle that, um, now try and describe it was, I reckon if 10 people went around holding hands around this scarab beetle, they might reach you know, all the way around, at least 10 people. It was that round, it was that big. Um, and this scarab beetle is one of those things where if you, so if, if you circle it three times uh, with somebody, uh, you would be that with that person for forever or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, I was there solo, so it was like, well, I'm not walking around that three times because I want to don't want to be solo forever. <laughs> Didn't want to lose Nathan. Um, so, yeah, Rab One did his usual trick with taking me around, showing me stuff, and then leaving, to my, leaving me be to take pictures, which is where it's really funny because I don't take pictures when he's talking about it. So, therefore, when I actually take the pictures, I can't remember what it was about. I have the um, memory of some of the stuff that they talk about on tours of, um, of a goldfish that lasts about three seconds. Um, well, not quite. So yeah, there was quite a few interesting monuments to see. Uh, very big. There, it was actually a busy place. Now, in a lot of the places I had been, it wasn't so busy. Um, but this was busy. There was people everywhere. And it wasn't just visitors. It wasn't just tourists. You know, you could see Egyptians in there. Well, they might have been tourists from another section, another part of the country. But, you know, you could tell they were Egyptian. So it was, it's a temple that's visit, visited uh, by a lot of people. <sighs> so, wandered around, took pictures, um, and amazed at the size of this, these monuments in this one more coffee needed um, yeah now this is when it gets a little bit interesting so we've finished with the monument in the monument within the temple and gone back to where the entrance is um, and you can see security everywhere you could see police everywhere with their guns not drawn but their guns very visible now up until this point you could see the guards around the police around but they blended in this day and we've come in um you could see the security everywhere and um red one spoke to one of the guards, one of the security, one of the police, whatever they were. And there had been a bombing in Egypt. Um, yeah. Uh, it was, I think it was a Muslim, um, a Muslim mosque that had been a uh, suicide bomber had bombed it or something like that. But there'd been a bombing in Egypt at a religious site. So therefore, the guards were out on high alert and making sure they were visible so people saw them. Um, then Radwan turned around and he said, he turned around and said to me, oh, there's been a bombing, um, but it's in North Sinai. I think it was North Sinai. Um, I will put a picture in here somewhere um, about North, uh, showing you the map of North Sinai in comparison to where I actually was. But yeah, it, it just, it's 
suppose it brought it home a little bit about being safe and what can happen in in other countries when you're not used to that type of environment but oh my gosh the security the guards everywhere it was just it was just like bang they were there type thing yeah um so they were all so they were all on heightened alert um to make you know, for you know, for for obvious reasons uh, so yes it was a mosque it was definitely a mosque because of radwan's reaction because radwan was is muslim um it's only because of that event the bombing that i found out that he was muslim otherwise i, I don't think i realized he was muslim until that point um but yeah so yeah security it was there big time so we went from there and we drove back into Luxor because Karnak was a little bit out of Luxor um, we drove to back into Luxor and to the Luxor temple the Luxor temple was quite interesting um, at the front there was baboons with I think their eyes covered or something or other um, they were, they were the protectors um, all classes of protectors with this temple uh, there was a Greek influence there so there was actually uh, you will at some stage see the picture of the Greek influence and when you see it you'll know exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> you can't mistake the type of uh, monument not very big at all not very big but it was the um, I suppose the the Greeks or the Romans or whatever it was put it well the Romans put in their stamp somewhere to show that they had been there type thing uh, anyway. oh. <coughs> excuse me so yeah getting into Luxor temple um, because of the bombing there it was a lot more intense so normally going in through security through an entrance you put your bag down it gets screened this so this is standardly screened and a woman comes and pats you down um, this going through the security this time they my bags besides being screened they actually opened up and looked in there um, yeah which is it's the first time they've actually opened the bags I obviously opened it in front of me, you know, type thing. But, um, yeah, the, just the additional measures they take when something like that happens, just in case there is um, another one. Uh, and <clears throat> most of the time it is just, I shouldn't say just, but it's churches and mosques. So the the catholic churches or the christian churches and the mosques because it's the different religions going after each other so the muslims for the christians or catholics and the, the catholics for the muslims um and it's tit for tat basically so if there's a bombing on a mosque apparently there's, there'll be a bombing on a uh yeah another on a church i suppose that's the best way to put it and always when crowded <clears throat> so I think it was when off at midday prayer was when it went off um, so yeah we went through quite a, a noticeable difference in the um, security um, obviously there is no photos with the guards in there I think I think one of the wisest things when you're in a country like that is not to because sometimes when there's guards, they actually will confiscate your camera and take delete pictures if they see you taking pictures of what you shouldn't be. Um, always, always, always look at the laws when you enter another country. Might be a while before I do that. Um, <clears throat> not funny. So yeah, we've gone through this through Karnak Temple, and there was. There was um, the statue of 
a boy and a girl. And it was, it was, it was a boy and a girl. The features were very childlike. And Radwan turned around and said, well, that is, this is where some of it got confusing. That is um, Kooten Tarman, Kooten Tarman, oh, I can't even say that, Tooten Carmen, oh gosh, Tooten Carmen, and his bride, who was his sister. And that's one thing that was really strange to me because back in Cairo, I was told by Maggot that um, his whole family, that he was alive, but his whole family had been assassinated. So I was baffled at that point for, well, apparently his whole family had been assassinated. So why, what's happened with, how can they say this is his sister? But, um, yeah, definitely childlike. So you could see where the depiction of um, Tutankhamun as a, a child pharaoh um, was very pronounced. <clears throat> um, but yeah, uh, I think, did they say, she did, his, his, his bride did fall pregnant or did give birth but the baby died or whatever I think that's some of the story but yeah um not too sure on that but um so yeah uh, Luxor temple was quite interesting um <coughs> mm, excuse me every time I cough I think oh is that a dry cough <laughs> not funny um so yeah Luxor temple we left Luxor temple and then I was dropped back at my hotel now Radwan had gone to reception he'd organized for um to finish finalize my bill obviously I didn't have to pay because it was all part of the thingy but if there was any additional charges um I was to you know, pay it, the any additional in which was you know like room service and that which I didn't get any of that. It's funny I don't take advantage of room service very often. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, that night that night is the night that I tried the grilled prawns, thinking that they would be the shells would be removed, possibly the tail. Um, still on uh, but I got the full prawn head included um, uh, yeah now I think they were very straight they were very surprised to see me peel the head and the shell off and then eat the prawns inside um, because normally it's the whole lot because it's all been cooked you eat the whole lot mm. Um, I did have another serving of baba ganoush. Oh gosh, that was yummy. Um, but all in all, it was actually a pleasant meal. I wouldn't have, if I had known, I think I mentioned this before, but if I had known the, that it was going to be grilled with the, the prawn shell on, um, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have ordered it and I would have tried to find something else to eat on the menu. Um... So yeah, my last night in uh, Luxor was pretty much uneventful otherwise. I did, I wandered around the palace. I wasn't that tired, uh, but I wandered around the palace hotel a bit more. And then it was like, okay, upstairs, go back up to my room and I pack my bags. So I packed my bags with everything, basically just leaving out what I needed for the next day. Um, toiletries obviously being the last thing packed the next day um, but yeah so I um, packed went to bed got up in the morning and did I just trying to remember oh uh, yeah I know I brought my dad my I brought my own bags down um, I didn't have anybody bring them down for me <clears throat> um, yeah so 
I actually, when Red One dropped me off after visiting the Luxor tent, Temple, he turned around and he said, well, this is the last time you will see me. The In the morning, you will get picked up um, by such and such. Oh, my gosh, I couldn't remember the name. And you'll still have the same driver. We'll, we'll take you to Hagar. Um, so, yeah, I wished him all the best. Thanked him for his um, taking me around and showing me everything. Gave him his tip because um, he'd already warned me that this was going to be the last time. I gave him his tip in an envelope and, um, yeah, that was it. So, But, yeah, in the morning, you know, these guys were there to take me to her garden. Um, <clears throat> day eight, day nine. Hang on. Now, I did not take any pictures at all through to, from the right, drive from Hagada, uh, sorry, the drive from Luxor to Hagada. It was desert. It was real desert. It is what you picture of Egypt. Um, there were sections where there was mountain ranges that were just, well, basically massive, massive, massive. Um, but um, it was what you and I, you know after I got out of Luxor it was really what it, what you expect and think of Egypt um, yeah now on the way to Hagada um, I I realized actually you know we stopped at one place for for lunch and then we've gotten back in the vehicle and I have a little thing where I grab my necklace and I'll actually to grab the pendant and I twirl it backwards and forwards at times and I went to grab my necklace and it wasn't there <clears throat> now this necklace Nathan brought me um, it was a Pandora necklace um, I think I've got pictures of it but not yet you won't see it um, but yeah, I turned around and let the let the, the driver and that know. I've turned around and said I've left my necklace back at the uh, hotel, and they've just turned around and said, "Well, what room was it?" And I've turned. I I was actually able to say it's this room, and the exact place that I put my necklace down. I told them the exact place where I placed it. Um, I always when I take my necklace off. I don't. I, I take it off before I have a shower, and I don't wear it to bed. But I, otherwise, I wear it all the time. Um, but yeah, I turned around and said, "This is where I play." When I took my necklace off, it was this room, and this is where I placed it. I know I didn't pick it up. I do not recall picking it up. So that's where it is. Um, yeah, and so I let them know those details and thought, "I'm never going to see that necklace again." Mm. Um, but yeah I left it in their hands um, and then they you know otherwise it was very uneventful drive to Hagada um, the guy the guy my, the escort that was with me checked me into the Hagada hotel um what was it called? Okay. It was the Red Sea Marriott. So this was right on the Red Sea. Um, so we'll throw some pictures in of... I'll throw some pictures in of my room. Uh, but you'll see other stuff a bit later on. Um, but yeah, so the Red Sea, Marriott Red Sea. It was quite a big place. It was nice. Did like it. Um, very clean. And very Westerner, you know, influenced. Um, 
Yeah, it, it was made with the Westerner in mind for the way it was set up. Um, but yeah, he I dropped off, I went to my room and he said, oh, he turned around and said, we'll see what we can do about getting your necklace back. And I'm like half out of the going, yeah, right, I'm not getting that back. Because you don't expect to get something like that back. Um, so, that night I had, that afternoon I had organised, so Hagada, in the tour that I had, Hagada was a couple of days of R&R &R where it didn't have anything booked by the tour company. It was just a rest day. Um, you know, well, it was just rest days without anything planned and I could plan anything I wanted to there. So knowing that, I actually uh, booked for the first night um, this tour. Now the tour was quad bikes, quad bike riding quad bikes in the desert and uh, camel rides and uh, meal at, in a Bedouin. Okay, so the Bedouins actually it's a a it is a it's a nomadic nomadic tribes within Egypt, um, or they used to be, but they don't live in the towns. They they yeah they stay out of towns. Um. Yeah. So, uh, quad bikes. Oh my god, I had so much fun the best <laughs> isn't it stupid but it was the best thing for the whole trip uh, my yeah I have to put it down to the my favorite part of the whole trip was actually that day oh, gosh Hang on a sec. Message from the partner. Okay. Text message from Nathan. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The quad bikes. Oh, my gosh. I had so much fun. And I thought uh, the way it was described, we would only be on the quad bikes for a little while. But we weren't. We were on the quad bikes for at least an hour maybe even more we've ridden into the desert um, into some mountain ranges there oh, I know when I say mountain ranges the automatic picture is trees and, and yeah all greeny but it's all rock all rock um, yeah so we drove towards we rode the quad bikes so then and oh my god it was so much fun so much fun I actually had um, what what's called a, a, a dust sleeve so it's um, I think I've got a picture of me with it and I'll, I'll see if I can zoom it in um, but basically it's like a sleeve that pulls over your head <laughs> here we go I'm doing the movements <laughs> but a sleeve that pulls over your head um, it's open either end and you just adjust it to where you want it to cover um, you know I had it up over my nose and that protected my nose um, from dust uh, it also protects uh, sun on the back of the neck so I do wear this um, other places I do wear it when I'm gardening in the middle of summer just to prevent sunburn on the back of the neck and on the ears um, but yeah it was absolutely brilliant uh, I don't know whether I did we did it with um, you know it was it was with a group where we didn't know each other. Um, oh my God. We stopped at one point for, well, I'd say for the guys that were on the bikes to stop and have a cigarette or to for timing wise or whatever, I'm not fully sure. Um, and took photos and there was two guys there that, oh my God, they had actually gotten outfits I don't, I don't think I've got pictures of them 
but they'd actually cotton outfits to look like they were actually fitting um you know they were outfits to wear for as if they were um i suppose egyptians in their their long clothes long clothes and all of that and, um yeah they were phenomenal they were preening absolutely preening themselves and taking pictures and oh my gosh that was so funny watching them um but yeah got some pictures in that location including me with a a rock over my head holding a rock over my head but it, it's just trick photography it's an interesting process um yeah so we've gone finally gotten to the bedouin village now it is so there are transient people but they did have that actually built like a, a shack type stuff there for them to be in um, we were shown um, how they made bread there's a woman that showed how to make bread and before we actually were taken in the into this room well room it was had two sides to it only um, they we were told about their lifestyle and because they don't um, mix with anybody else there is um, how do I put it the families are so close together that it's basically one family and you might end up with a cousin marrying a cousin well marrying a cousin type thing um, and he did turn around and he said you know because they don't marry outside of the group um, the some of their children that are born actually are born with disabilities um, without being rude though you know he said basically because of inbreeding um, they have a lot of children that they have children that end up um, with deformities and a lot wrong with them um, and yeah just yeah, we've walked into this this area where the woman was showing us how uh, they make their bread and there was this what I thought was a, a baby lying next to her on the blanket and she was just every now and then she'd just give a pat on the bum you know and then I realized it was actually not a baby it, the child was probably 10 11 um, and yeah uh, um, I suppose one way to describe it was very close to being um, someone with a child with cerebral palsy type thing um, you know so you know the, the our guide had actually forewarned us so that we wouldn't be surprised but he forewarned us without realizing that he had without us realizing that he had um that we he did we didn't realize we were actually going to go and we would see somebody like that uh, but yeah um so yeah we've uh, done that and then we've hopped on the camel and um one of the photos you'll see is where i'm from on top of the camel there's no pictures of me on the camel. <laughs> uh, most of the time, wherever I went, you know, people offered to use my camera to take a picture of me, to, you know, so that I had a picture of me in the area. Or doing it. Uh, yeah, no, not this one. Uh, got up, the camel stood up. Um, yeah. Oh, I've been on camels before and I forgot what it's like when they get up you get thrown about you really do need to hold on and i'm not a little person <laughs> it threw me around um so yeah i had a young girl that actually led me um and it was just a very short walk up and around you know just to say well i've ridden a camp basically it was to say i've ridden a camel in egypt um that was all the experience was it wasn't about actually doing going somewhere with the camel it was just a walk around in a small area but i did get beautiful pictures of um the sun setting and you'll actually see the the way that um the mountains are, are in egypt 
And then we went to another area for um, something to eat. And I was very disappointed. Um, you get this image of you'd be sitting with when you when I booked it, it was I, I was going to be sitting with the Bedouin group and we'd be sitting there eating meal with them and hearing a bit more about them. But no, it was just an area where they served us something to eat. Um, basically, they came in with food and then they disappeared again, and it was yeah, it was nothing. Um, we were also taken. Where is that? Um, taken away from that area because it was such so dark you could really see this yeah I'm just making sure I'm doing the right um, colour um, you could really see the stars and people were actually very amazed to see the stars and he was pointing out different things and it was actually for me it didn't mean much to me but there was people that were like going oh wow you know they were they were surprised to see how many stars there were. Um, and for me, it wasn't a big interest because in Australia, um, where we are, especially when we go camping, you know, we're away from the lights. You know, even when we were in, when growing up, I was in a town where you could see the stars every night with clarity because there was not much in the way of um, light pollution in the area. But there were people that were actually, you know, ooing and ahhing about what they could see. Yeah. So, yeah, we did that. And then we rode the quad bikes back. So, yes, the quad bike ride was for more than an hour back to where we um, started. And, oh, it, even that in the pitch, it was pitch black. It was pitch black. So we were just following... Uh, you know, following the person in front of us to where we were going back. Um, you could see the direction we were heading. You could see that we were heading towards, excuse me, <coughs> we we're heading towards Cairo. Uh, not Cairo, we we're heading towards Pergada because you could see the, the lights um, in the distance. And it was in the distance because the distance we travelled. Um, but yeah. It was, it was absolutely brilliant. One of the best, I'd say the best part of the whole trip was just riding these quad bikes in the desert. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd ha I had ridden a quad bike once before, but not very successfully. Uh, now that I did that, it was really good. Um, so yeah, we got back to where we were and um, Hang on a sec. Sorry. I went and got this. So when you get back to the... Um, get back to uh, where we were, where we got on the bikes, they actually give you the opportunity to purchase. So that was me on the quad bike, um, which is really cool. Um, so that was 25th of November. They put the year on it. Um, so, yeah. You can see the face thing there. They actually do, they give you the ability to buy a scarf. But yeah, I had that. I didn't need to purchase it. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, excellent. We've taken back to the, um, back to the Red Sea Marriott. And um, I have, did I get room service that night? No, I didn't get room service. I, yeah, the night I got room service, I'll explain that. That was the next night. But this night I walked down into the uh, buffet, helped myself, had my dinner, um, and just enjoyed sitting back. Um, it was quite peaceful. Um, where I sat, I actually sat outside, so I had the, basically the sea was right there in front of me. It was very very nice and calming uh, yeah um, yeah went to my room went to bed in the morning now I had been I had organized for um, go horse riding 
um, yeah, with a, I'm trying to work out what it was, I can't remember what it was called, um, but I went horse riding with this group that did, they, they actually did, they rescued animals, um, you know, and I thought, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's really good, they rescue animals, and then, uh, at the time, at home, you know, it, was, it meant a lot to me that, you know, this was a place that rescued animals and horses and um, and the likes, which uh, is good. It is good. Um, where did I see that? There we go. But then when I got to Egypt, I discovered that there is a lot of places that rescue animals because there is so many animals that need to be rescued. Uh... Yeah, so I've um, gone there and unfortunately, I when I packed my suitcase to go away, I didn't pack jeans. I forgot I was going horse riding, so I didn't pack jeans. Uh, yeah, regretted that one. Now, there is footage, and I will put video footage of me bouncing on this horse what was her name what was her name oh my gosh oh my gosh um uh, was it sarah uh sarah was it sarah oh no i've got my days mixed around no, I got my days mixed around. It wasn't that wasn't the day I did the horse riding. This is why I look stuff up. So I'd done the yeah, I'd done the the night I did the quad bites. The next day I was supposed to do what was I supposed to do? I was gonna go on a semi submarine um in the Red Sea, you know, have a look under the ocean and see uh all the uh, well, they were supposed to take you to a, vo a place where there's dolphins and all of this. Um, and because of the night before, I just wasn't, I was exhausted, so I wasn't up to it. So I cancelled it. Um, so yeah, I cancelled the submarine. I didn't care whether I got the money back or not. I was just too exhausted and I just had the, decided to have the morning in the hotel which I walked around in and uh, there is, I think there might be some pictures of me in the Red Sea. Um, I'll see if I can find them. Um, but yeah, I've walked around the hotel. I've taken some really good pictures of the hotel. Um, but I went for a swim in the Red Sea and I went for a swim in their swimming pool and I relaxed, really did, I relaxed, it was, it was a great day. And I think that's why they give you, with what you do on the tour, which is why they give you those couple of days in Hagada to actually rest, because I actually did need it. Uh, in the afternoon, I had another, guy, another tour book organised, which I did do and wrapped that I did. Now the tour was, it was a walking tour of Hagada. But it was part walk, it ended up being part walking and, uh, hang on, it was part walking and then, oh gosh I wish this would be nice to me. It was part walking um, and being driven. But I was met by a woman, so she's come with um, her sign up for me, and her name, what was her name? I can't even remember her name. Um, but yeah, she, she took me around, um, we went to a mosque, uh, she turned around and she said, oh, well, you know, for you to go into the mosque, you need to um, go and hire a scarf or, or something so that you can be respectful for 
our religion. So she was obviously Muslim. And I turned around and I pulled out my, I had, I had pulled out my scarf and said, I respect every culture and I was very prepared. I said, here's my scarf. I'll, I'll put that on. And she was, she was taken aback. She seemed to be very surprised that I was already prepared to go in. Um, being a very religious country, you know, I knew that to res for, for to respect the religions there, I, I realised that I knew that I would have to cover my head at different points, to cover my head and my face at different places. So, you know, I had this with me. I carried the scarf with me every time I went out. Um, never left it in the hotel. It was with me all the time. Um, but, yeah, so she took me into a mosque. You had you'd take the shoes off at the front door um, you know in some countries if you took your shoes off and you went inside somewhere those shoes wouldn't be there but not in not when not in places like this you know, because everybody has to take their shoes off to go into a mosque um, got away with it, the citadel but yeah uh, yeah so we've gone in and she's talked about it and you know I've asked her questions about herself um not being too personal but you know keep trying to get an understanding of what it's like to be a, a muslim woman and she turned around and said well the the i'm not allowed to go anywhere without a chaperone um she has a boyfriend she's not allowed to go anywhere without a chaperone which is why it was her cousin that was driving and she wasn't driving um, she wasn't allowed to drive. Um, I think it might have been more to do with her age. She was she's fairly young, um, but yeah, she has a boyfriend. And I asked a bit about. Uh, I don't know how I put it, but anyway, we ended up in an interesting conversation where uh, she was saying when she gets married, they will. Everything that they have when they get married will be brand new. There is nothing. They will not be bringing anything old into the into their into their house. Everything has to be new. Um, he's done a dowry for her, and you know all of that, so that yeah, it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. Um, but yeah, we just walked along. Uh, walked up to. Oh, went to the food markets. Oh my gosh, I couldn't get out of there quick enough. Um, the smell was overwhelming. Um, between the fruit and vegetables, which was wasn't too bad, uh, there was always there was other foods as well, so meats um, and all of that, because they the the true Muslims. Uh, have to eat fresh uh, they don't eat basically their meat is over there it's slaughtered and it's eaten the, that day or the second day it's it's never frozen um, but yeah they have they, they everything is fresh um, but I was actually fascinated with her you know with her as being an everyday person um, and talking about everyday life for her was just amazing to hear. Um, we've walked from there. Um, her cousin came along and picked us up and went to a an aquarium. Some amazing fish in there. You might see some pictures of fish. Um, be aware of the aquarium. Um, I had to pay for my ticket because this was not part of the guided tour of full tour so I actually had to pay for a ticket to get in um, but she she took my money and went to the counter bought the ticket and then came back to me um, yeah so that I didn't have to go up then like I wasn't speaking I didn't have an Arabic and she spoke to them in Arabic and she obviously knew them because uh, she does you know this sketchy guide thing she's done it a few times by the sound of it um, she then took me to a, oh, she took me to a church. 
um, and she stopped and she talked about the church and she said oh, you could go in take pictures and then come out when you when you're ready and because she is so Muslim she wouldn't even go into this church she just yeah no nah, that's she's she's not going there because she's Muslim and she's so strong on her religion so um, yeah, it was just basically I was taken in, taken to the gate, dropped off at the gate. She talked to me about it, and then um, I was left to wander into the church myself. Um, I didn't take any pictures inside the mosque or the church. Um, I'm not that keen of taking pictures inside places of uh, worship like that. Um, I've come out, and then she's taken me to. A, they've taken me to a perfume factory. And oh my gosh. Um, the I did purchase some perfumes um, and talked all about it and I got some beautiful pretty bottles um, yeah it was just it was brilliant absolutely brilliant to see and yeah I helped the economy out there which was good um, then then it was like it was getting dark so taking me back to um, on the way back to the hotel, we stopped at a bazaar, a shopping, shopping area, um, wandered around. There's nothing I liked. Um, to me, it all looked, you know, where, where the shop that she took me to was just mass produced stuff, and it's not, no, it just, it just didn't appeal to me. And she turned around and she said, Is there anything else? you would like and I've just turned around and said oh I'd love some coke because there was no coke in the hotel it was all Pepsi there was no coke in the hotel um, so she turned around and said okay well we'll stop here my cousin will go in he will get you coke how much do you want and you know I just turned around and said oh I'll get about four cans that should see me to the till I finish here um, in her garden so when it that so she said, just sit here um, and my, my cousin will go in. So I've given him money and he's looked at it. And I didn't understand why he looked at it. But then he went inside, got the coat, came back to me and he gave me so much of that money back. Because he was uh, a local Egyptian and they didn't see me at all, he got charged local local price um, so you know we are I, I paid the true price of coke now cola drinks in Egypt at that time were actually classed as the cheapest place in the world to buy cola drinks so that was coke or Pepsi it was the cheapest place in the world um, so basically I'd paid <clears throat> when when it was calculated out, I'd paid seventy five cents for a for one can of Coke. So that was all I. So my Coke was really really cheap this time. Everywhere else it had been noticeably dearer, but because it was a local, yeah, he got it at a really cheap price, which was good. Um, and then they've taken me back to the hotel. Um, I've had a shower and then gone down for dinner and then just chilled in my room, come back and chilled in my room. Um, now, the next morning, oh, here we go. I am actually giving you quite a few days. Um, oh, there we, I did take some pictures of the outside of the church. <coughs> but the next day, yeah. You will see me on our horse galloping. Mm -hmm. Slotted in right here. I am not the most... Uh <laughs> um, graceful person on a horse. And this horse was, oh my God, she was stubborn ass. <laughs> She was so stubborn. Did I get her name? Hannah. 
Yes, Hannah was her name. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me on her. But basically Hannah was a, they said she's lazy because she's got two speeds. <laughs> one is stop, one is go basically. Um, well no, she, she, would, she would walk um, and then I'd managed to get her a speed up to a trot and then suddenly she'd be in a gallop and oh my gosh, I got thrown around and thrown around. Um, I had chaps on because the pants I had, I didn't have any long pants, I had, but I had chaps, they put, gave me chaps to wear to protect my calves. And I'll tell you what, I was holding on to Hannah with uh, my, every part of my body was squeezing her tight to stay on when she was galloping. Um, we... And basically, I rode Hannah in the desert yet again. Well, there's not much else. Not a you know, there's no fields to roam in a, on a horse. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and it wasn't just me telling the horse to move. It'll be Hannah, Hannah. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, she was she was lazy. But then when she took off, she took off. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good fun, good fun. Uh, we got to one point and we stopped to sit with a group of people and have uh, tea in the shade, I think, a hibiscus tea. Um, I'd actually gotten to like hibiscus tea, it was nice. Um, but yeah, so we had had uh, this hibiscus tea uh, and then it was a case that we had to get back on the horse. Mmm, I... I was sore already. It was like, oh no, oh no. Um, but yeah, so I got back on the horse and we rode the horses. Uh, there was just the three of us. Uh, we rode the horses to the beach. Uh, part of the tour, I was supposed to get on the horse bareback and ride her on the beach bareback. Um, but I, there was no way, not with her, not with the way she was. It was just no Ah, no, not good. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, done the uh, horse ride. We got, I got picked up because um, we, we took longer than expected because, yeah, the Hannah, Hannah was just a pain in the ass. Um, I decided not to do take the ride her into the ocean uh, bareback. There was no way it was that happening. Plus, the lady that had dropped me off, um, she was waiting for me. So I was like, well, I'll hop off. You can, yeah, no, you can take Hannah into the ocean all by yourself. Because, um, you know, that is one of the highlights for these horses. They do love it in the sea and having a swim. Um, yeah, it's, it is nice. Hang on, I'm just looking at the top section. I hope you don't see my head when I'm leaning over there. Uh, so yeah, we, whoops. Yeah, we, you know, so I got off the horses and got picked up and taken back to the hotel. And I was like, hmm, I smell a horse. Uh, in, a, in a resort like that, smelling a horse is not a good thing. So I'd had a, I had a quick shower and then I got a phone call, so it's really strange to get a phone call when you're when you um, you know in another country. But yeah, I got a phone call, and it was actually was it a phone call? No, I got a message um, letting me know that the company Ask Aladdin had chased it, had tracked down my my necklace, and. Because they brought another tour group from Hagar, from Luxor to Hagara, the tour that the, the group that that was with, the driver actually had picked up my necklace and brought it back. And oh my gosh, I got my necklace back. So you will get a picture of my necklace. I did not think I was going to get that back, but I did. And you know, for them to actually do that, oh my gosh. 
my gosh, I was so happy. I was so happy to see that. I tipped the guy, you know, probably over tipped him, but I was really grateful to have that back. So, yeah. Um, and from there, I wandered around the hotel complex a bit more. Um, and I was starting to stiffen up from the horse ride. Um, yeah. What I decided was I was not going to walk down to, to dinner. I was going to sit in the bathtub and soak, because there was a bath in the, in the room, um, sit in the bath ha and soak and um, I'd re order room service. So that's what I did. I, oh, room service. I had, yeah, prawn cocktail. I, yeah, I had a reasonable meal at uh, room service. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, that was my last night in her garden. So I took some pictures outside of uh, my window where the sun was setting over the Red Sea. Um, some interesting picture, the moon with a cloud over, over it. Um, but basically, yeah, I had my soak, I had my dinner, and then I packed my gear because I was heading to the airport um, to fly from Hagada to Cairo because I was heading to Alexandria then that that evening. Uh, so yeah, I will leave this chat here. I did cover a few days. Uh, I cover, covered my time in Hagada. Um, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting experience and I really did. I enjoyed a lot of what I did in Hagada. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it is one of the places that's popular to um, the English because there was a lot of English people at, at the, the resort because um, there's so much sunshine. <laughs> um, but I think I will, yeah, I'll leave that there. Hopefully you've enjoyed <coughs> enjoyed the travel so far. Um, it, yeah, stay tuned for more um, and I will say guys, uh, comments, let me comment. What do you think? Have you ridden a horse? Have you ridden a quad bike? Um, so I'll leave it there and uh, thank you for, for joining me for another trip down memory lane in Egypt and uh, hit the sub I should do this at the beginning because it's, I don't know, hit the subscribe button and the bell and all of that lovely stuff. So you'll uh, enjoy another chat with me later. Um, but I will say guys thank you for listening and bye for now.